so we created a main menu let's uh, play the main menu and let's go to our first scene which is going to be our gameplay scene and for our button let's set the color tint to none and let's go to the uh, gameplay scene so inside our scenes folder we have our gameplay scene and we'll start by setting up our uh, gameplay scene so i forgot to add the change logs but it doesn't matter so now for our gameplay scene let's first change our background color which is going to be our yellowish one and after that we'll set its position to 2 1 and negative 10 and the size for now let's set it to 6 and we are going to have a gameplay manager and we'll reset its transform and we'll add our gameplay manager script and after that the rest is going to be our ui and let's first create a text which is going to be our win text so our win text just uh, shows up when at the center so let's add win and the size it's going to be 10 to 4 by 5 and 2 positioning will have it at from the bottom at 448 and size will make it 160 and for the color we'll use our uh, dark color and for the font we'll use our word sans font and as you can see it is at the bottom it is showing when and that's our when text now after a when text we are going to have our title text which i just created by duplicating it and it is going to be from the top center at negative 256 and uh, the size it's going to be 768 by 256 Hmm. and for the size we'll set it to 96 and uh, it is going to be aligned to the left and what it is going to say for now it is a regular which is our level name and dash 40 so that's where our uh, level name is showing up and here we are going to have our gameplay and after that we have three buttons to restart the game go to the main menu and uh, go to the next scene let's set up our canvas so we'll attach it to the camera let's pull it down and the order in layer mm, let's just leave it at uh, zero uh, we'll have it scale with screen size and it's going to be 1080 by 2160 and uh, uh, we are going to match the height so that is going to be our canvas now let's create our first button which is going to be our restart button and it is going to be positioned from the bottom and the y position is going to be 192 we'll attach an image component which is going to be our uh, square slice 16 and the size it's going to be 192 by 192 and the color we are going to use f to 66 e and this is our restart button as it's a button it's going to need a button component attached and after that we'll create a ui an image which is going to be our restart image and we can we'll just uh, get it from our sprites so restart is our return and uh, its color it's going to be our uh, dark color 
similarly we'll duplicate our restart and this is going to be our next and for the image we are going to use the next and its positioning it's uh, going to be at uh, positive 288 and uh, i will duplicate this next and it is going to be our uh, mm, previous uh, is it previous level no it is going to be main menu um, mm, 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 go to menu and uh, similarly it is going to be positioned at negative and for the image we are going to use our previous image so that's just the basic ui setup and everything we are going to spawn through code and the first thing we need to spawn is our uh, board and let's create our board here first so this is our board will uh, reset its transform and it's going to have a sprite renderer attached and our board is going to be needed to be sliced and for the sprite we are going to use the board sprite and for now for the size uh, let's use uh is it positioned at zero yeah so let's have it position at 1.5 and our main camera also needs to position at 1.5 so as you can see it is uh, perfectly at the center and for the size we'll use three cross three and uh, we'll add a border of uh, 0 0.04 on both sides and for the color we are going to use our dark color and uh, it is going to e2d to a so that should be its color and it is going to have a couple of background cells so let's duplicate this board and we'll call this background cell and for the sprite we'll use the background cell and for the color we are going to use the dark color and our board is going to be at the bottom most position which is going to be negative 10 and our cell is going to be at negative 9 and our cell is not going to be sliced it is going to be simple and we'll set its scale to 1 so as you can see it is already looking good and we'll set its color to be our uh, bright color e2d to a and f28 okay so it is going to be a little bit darker color and if we position it at 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 you should be able to see the borders if we add one you can see it here we'll add one more one and we can see it there and we'll add one here and we'll add one more here so it is not perfect but uh, this is going to be our board we'll delete uh, we can delete them later but let's go inside our prefabs and let's save both of them as a prefab so our board will be saved as a prefab and our background cell will be saved as a prefab and this is just for the look of uh, how it's going to look and after that we are going to have our node so our node is again going to be similar to our cell but it is going to have some edges and uh, it also needs to attach a box collider 2d to detect the clicks and by default the size are also perfectly set up so we don't need to do anything so let's create our uh, first node so the first thing it's going to have is box collider 2d which is going to be set to trigger and as you can see it is at the center our background cell was at 005 so let's reset its transform 
and similarly our board for now we set it to zero zero we reset its transform and this is going to be our node as you can see it is perfectly aligned up and it is already a trigger and it is going to need the node script so after we have our node we are going to create an empty so we'll need to attach a point if it has in the end and it is going to have a sprite renderer whose uh, sprite is cell so we have our cell and for the color for now let's use the yellow color and the order in layer will uh, set it to negative five so it is going to be at the bottom most position and we'll duplicate this point and we'll create our top edge and our top edge is going to have the edge and as you can see it is already looking like an edge and it's all in layer we need to set it to negative four and after our top edge we are going to have our left edge and what we'll do is uh, we'll just rotate it by 90 and if we rotate it again by 90 we are going to have our bottom edge and our right edge so as you can see it is already looking like uh, how our node is going to look and we should be able to see it afterwards and finally we are going to have our highlight which is going to be a pixel mm -hmm. order layer will set it to negative three and let's set the rotation to zero instead of uh, pixel will have it sliced uh, let's set it to 1.1 .1, size to 1 and what we'll do is uh, we'll set its transparency to 128 maybe we can even decrease it further so 64 so as you can see it is uh, already looking like a highlight so this is going to be our highlight and our node will save this node as a prefab and what we can do to see how it's going to look at the we'll just position it here and as you can see it is uh, fitting perfectly fine and that is our highlight so if the game has finished then it will show the highlights now let's delete everything so we already saved them as a prefab and whatever we are going to do is uh, through scripts and what we need to do is uh, set up our gameplay managers three button functions so let's open up our gameplay manager it is already opened up in visual studio and uh, let's see from where should we start so first we need to assign it to a namespace and surround with namespace and we'll call this uh, connect dot core and inside our gameplay manager let's first get a region of start methods and we'll end the region and the first region we are going to do is uh, for storing all of our variables so inside our variables the first variable we are going to need is a gameplay manager instance and we will set it up inside our uh, awake function and hide an inspector and it is going to be public bool our has game finished and uh, has game finished is for uh, playing the next level so if our game has not finished we don't want to go to the next level then let's create a serialized field for the private tmp text 
and the first text we are going to need is our title text serialize field private game object and we are going to need our uh, win text pause we don't need to show at the start we only need to show when the game finishes and serialize field private right renderer uh, click highlight so we can spawn it as an animator but uh, there is only one so we'll just uh, have a reference to it and inside our awake we'll just set the instance to this and after that our has game finished is going to be false and our win text dot set active is going to be false and our title text dot game object dot set active it's going to be true uh it is already true but doesn't matter and our title text dot text is going to be our game manager okay so we are using it here instance dot stage name plus uh, underscore not underscore space dash space plus game manager dot instance dot current level and we'll convert it to a string so that is going to be our title text and after that uh, we'll uh, need to spawn the board and spawn the nose so we just need to spawn our starting conditions and also get our current level data mm, we'll do that later so let's just delete them and that is going to be our starting region here we are going to have a board spawn here we'll set up our camera and uh, the size and a hashtag region for node spawn so we need a reference to all the nodes and also a dictionary to store all of its positions if you want to do something to it and after that we are going to have our update methods and finally when so update methods is going to be inside another region so let's create the region first update methods and it is going to check for the game over and uh, our highlights and whatever we need to do Hmm. yeah and hashtag region for our win condition so and finally hashtag region for our button function so what we are going to do is uh, set up our button functions first so the first button public void clicked back and inside our clicked back what we are going to do is game manager dot instance dot go to main menu and similarly public void click the restart and here we'll do game manager dot instance dot go to gameplay and inside our public void uh, clicked and this is going to be our next level and first we need to check if our game has finished so if our game has not finished then we'll return and if our game has finished then we'll go to gameplay so 
when our game finishes we are going to update the level and the stage so it will automatically reload our next level so that's it for the button functions and in the next part we'll uh, start mm, let's assign those functions so we don't mess it up and there is our title text our win text and uh, we need to create our click highlighter so let's create our click highlighter and let's reset its transform we'll need to attach a sprite renderer which uh, has our uh, circle sprite and it needs to be sliced and for the color let's use our orange color with a transparency of 86 and we'll set its size to uh, 2 for now so not 2 the maximum is going to be 1 point uh, maybe yeah let's just leave it at 1 and the order in layer it is going to be a little bit higher so let's set an order in layer to negative three and we need to attach our click highlighter and we should be good to go and at the start we are not showing the highlighter so click highlight dot game object dot set active to false why didn't i check that okay so we are not showing it up mm -hmm. so we are going to do that inside our spawning and let's see if our game works perfectly fine so let's go inside our scenes and inside our main menu let's hit play and let's yeah so it is novice a1 let's go back but for that we need to assign all of our functions so let's assign our gameplay manager and for each of the function we'll uh, assign the function so gameplay manager click the next level and our go to main menu is going to have the click the back so now let's go inside the main menu and what we are going to do is uh, select a different level and it should show regular b1 and it is showing perfectly fine and we can also go to the back scene and it will show us our expert one so that was it and in the next part we'll start spawning our board so we have uh, set up the button functions and now let's uh, spawn our board so mostly it's going to be in the coding part and uh, what we want to do is uh, set up our board spawn region and uh, our node spawn region so in our node spawn we are going to have a couple of more variables so the first variable we are going to need is our level data and we'll call this current level data uh, and also a serialized field private node and this is going to be our node prefab and uh, let's just create all of our nodes private list of node and this is going to be nodes and a private void for spawning the nodes and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the public list of color which should be inside our board spawn and we'll call this node colors so public list of color node colors actually it should be inside our node spawn 
and it is not start is one is going to be spawn nodes and also to store all of the data we'll need to create a dictionary which uh, mm, public dictionary which is from v2 int and to node and this one it's going to be our node dictionary or node grid so whenever you want to get a node we'll pass the vector to integer which is the x and the y value and uh, we should get our nodes and uh, let's see what we need to do to spawn our board so inside our board spawn let's create a serialized field private sprite renderer uh, we'll need to change the some of the colors and the first sprite renderer is going to be our board prefab and our background cell prefab we can directly instantiate it so it doesn't matter and after that we are going to have a function to spawn our board and we'll call our spawn board function in our awake method so spawn board let's first get our current level size and from our current level size we'll uh, determine the size of our current board and it is going to be game manager dot instance dot current stage plus four so our first stage is going to have five cells so its size is five and we'll spawn a board and it is going to be instantiate our board prefab and for the position uh quaternion dot identity and let's see what we need to add for the position so let's pass a new vector 3 and for the x value we'll divide the current level size divided by 2f and for the z value we'll set it to 0 so this is going to be our board and we need to set the board size and it's going to be new vector 2 current level size and a little bit of border which is 0 0.08f So after that we should be able to spawn our board and let's see if we are able to spawn our board. So the board size is going to be a variable and let's go inside our gameplay scene, gameplay manager and let's add our colors. So first one is going to be our yellow color and there are so many colors. Uh, let's add them one by one we could add, add uh, we'll add them one by one uh, scriptable object is also going to do the same thing but uh, we already have inside our color palette so it doesn't matter and whenever we need it we are just uh, directly going to use from here so this is our blue the light blue than orange uh, whatever that color is so this is our node color and if we go inside our prefabs we have our node prefab our background cell prefab and our board prefab and uh, what should happen now is uh, we should be able to have different color mm, different boards uh, spawned and we need to uh, we won't be able to see it mm, let's see if we can see it so let's play from the main menu and our three cross three board is already there let's see what spawns here so this is our current board and let's see what its size so this one is eight cross eight size and uh, we need to resize our camera so let's go inside visual studio 
and let's finish setting up our board so after we have our board we need to spawn our background cells and it is going to be current level size and similarly for current level size we are going to instantiate our uh, cell prefab at our new vector 3 of i plus 0.5f comma g plus 0.5f and 0 and quaternion dot identity so this should spawn our background cells and after that we need to set up our camera so camera dot main dot orthographic size it's going to be equal to our current level size and we'll increase it by two and camera dot main dot uh, transform dot position it's going to be equal to new vector three where x position and y position are going to be two but our z needs to be at negative 10 and after that we'll set up our highlight so click highlight dot size is going to be new vector 2 current level size we'll divide this by 4 so our highlight needs to be higher click highlight dot uh, transform dot position let's set it to 0 and click highlight dot game object dot set active we'll set it to false and that's it for our uh, spawning the board now let's go inside unity and we didn't do anything much but uh, what uh, we should have is a board center so let's use expert and as you can see we have all of our boards and again there is some issue mm -hmm. so main camera it is at three and three current level size is uh, divide by 2 is 3 okay uh, it needs to be divided by 2 f and similarly our size also never needs to be divided by 2 f so that was the issue and let's hit play again so that was an integer and if we just divide it by 3 it will return an integer so it should uh, show us the center now a regular a uh, it is spawning at the center a regular b again spawning at the center and uh, expert is also perfectly spawning and also a master so we have a color we have our board and next we want to do is uh, spawn our uh, starting nodes and after that we'll start uh, like manipulating those nodes to show us the edges and it will be pretty much long so let's do that in the next part so our board is spawning perfectly fine uh, now we need to spawn all of our nodes which we have created and we already created the spawn nodes function so we'll start from there and what first we need to do is uh, say start up our list nodes is equals to new list of nodes and our node grid is going to be a new dictionary and after that we'll get our current level size which is game manager dot instance dot current stage plus four and on node so we are initializing at uh, start so it doesn't create new memory every time and uh, we'll spawn our nodes for entire less than zero current level size for int j less than zero current level size uh, we need to get our spawn position which is our new 
vector 3 and here we'll pass our i plus point 0 0.5 f then j plus point 0 0.5 f and finally 0 so this is our spawn position and our spawn node is going to be instantiate and we are going to instantiate our node prefab and we need to pass our spawn position and quaternion dot identity and after we have our spawn node we need to init and we'll create that method after yeah we'll create it afterwards and we need to get its color so if it is inside our current level data so color id for spawn node is going to get color id and we are going to pass two integers which are going to be our i and j mm, we'll also need to do that get so let's have it get our color id so public int get color id and int i comma int j and what we'll do is return minus one and uh, let's first get our list of edges and it should be inside our current level data dot edges and for each edge e in edges we'll set our uh, point mm, mm, mm. if uh, let's create our v2 int point is going to be new v2 int of i and j and what we'll do if e dot start point is equals to point or e dot end point is equals to point then we need to return the value so we'll return hmm, hmm. i but uh, where is i return edges dot index of e and uh, we can pass zero yeah so it will return the index of e uh in my previous part i did it differently but uh, here we can do that so let's just change it so for int i is equals to zero i less than edges dot count and um, again for int uh, what should we name it color id yeah let's just name it color id and less than edges dot count and hmm if our edge at color id dot start point is equals to our point or edges at color id dot end point is equals to point then we'll return our color id and we need to get that color id so get color id for i comma j 
and uh, if our color id is not equal to one then we need to color it so we'll also need to create that so if our color id for spawn node is not equal to negative one then we'll need to color it which is going to be our spawn node dot set color for and it is going to be point and the value we are going to pass is color id for spawn node so it should uh, set up the color and we need to add it to the nodes then we need to add it to the node grid and the key we are going to pass is new way to end of i comma j and our spawn node and after that we'll set its name to be equal to i dot to string plus j dot to string and after that spawn node dot post 2d uh, it should be equal to our new v2 int and we'll pass i and j so we need to create these three functions inside our node so we'll do that and it doesn't show up any errors so generate method internal void in it and generate method internal void in it and generate method so what happened here is uh, it uh, created public public and we'll delete everything else mm, and get and set so it created those methods for us and uh, after that uh, we have spawned each of our mm, mm, nodes we are going to create uh, one and yeah just uh, one more function which is going to return the highlight color so public color and it is going to get our get highlight color and will pass our int of color id and what it will do is uh, let's get the result which should be inside our node colors and our result dot alpha it's going to be 0.4f and we'll return the result so it will get us our highlighting color and uh, now we need to set up our edges so it created those functions for us but uh, all are like uh, separated and they don't know each other so our nodes don't know what is at its neighbor so we'll need to set up its neighbor and uh, for that we need to set and uh, let's create a list of v2 int and it is going to be our offset position and new list of v2 int and here we are going to pass some values so the first one is going to be up down left and right so what we'll do is uh, for each item in our node grid and for each offset in our offset position we'll check uh, let's get our checking position which should be 
item dot key plus offset and what we'll do if uh, our node grid dot contains key for our checking position then uh, we need to set up that value which should be item dot value dot set edge and we'll pass our offset which is the direction and also our node which is the node grid at the checking position and again we'll need to create that method and it should be inside our node and we need to make it public and we'll set it up in the next part so that is for our spawning the nodes and we'll see how we are going to use those methods in the next part and uh, let's uh, go to the next part uh, maybe let's check if our starting node is spawned correctly so our node doesn't have anything uh, let's just hit play and it didn't load our default level yeah so it already loaded but uh yeah we forgot to call the spawn node function so let's go inside visual studio and uh, there are a couple of things we forgot to do at the start so first thing we need to do is uh, before spawning the board we need to get our current level data which is inside our game manager dot instance dot get level and also we need to spawn our nodes so now maybe it should not show us any errors and let's go and play so let's hit play and as you can see it is looking too bad but uh, it spawned all the nodes and at the start everything is uh, just showing up everywhere we'll set this up in the next part so that was it for this part to know like what we need to uh, show and not show so that's why we will need to start editing our node script and what we'll do is uh, we'll just set up the starting conditions and we'll see how this goes so let's go inside visual studio and inside our node uh, so the post 2d we are setting it up and let me go inside the node script and let's see what we need to set up first so we are going to start from the serialized field private game object and this is going for the point private game object and this one is going to be for the top edge uh, bottom edge left edge right edge and we already have the up edge but uh, we'll just use the highlight so sometimes uh, autofill is good and we are going to have a private dictionary for node to game objects mm. and we'll call this connector edges so uh, for the top edge it is going to connect add to that edge and we'll see yeah and we are going to have a hidden inspector and our public integer for our color id and we'll make this small and we also need the pause 2d but let's see what we need to do inside our init Hmm. Connected nodes, connected edges. Okay, so connected edges. It just uh, shows uh, which node is connected to which edge. So we'll set it up in the starting conditions, and if it doesn't exist any, then we'll uh, need to change. 
and after all of this we are going to have let edge a public list of node and this are going to be our connected nodes so we need to know which node is connected and uh, which is not so let's set up our init so inside our init we'll just use one dot set active to false top edge bottom edge left edge right edge and connected nodes okay so we set up our connected edges now also we need to set up our connected nodes so connected nodes is going to be equal to new list of node and uh, we'll need to assign it to a namespace so hmm, 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 hmm. control k control s namespace connect dot core and that was inside for the init function and what we are going to do is uh, set color for point we'll use this dot color id is going to be equal to color id for spawn node and we'll show our point and we need to set its color so point dot get component and we need to get the sprite renderer component and we need to set its color and color it's going to be inside our gameplay manager dot instance dot uh, node colors and we'll pass our color id so it should give us the color and we don't need this and that should be for the start and for the offset what we can do is uh, if our offset is equals to up then connected edges for our top edge Hmm. connected edges for the node it's going to be equal to our top edge and if down I think uh, uh, yeah let's see if our auto correct shows up so if our offset is equals to right then our connected edges for node is going to be our right edge and similarly if our offset is going to be left then it is going to be our left edge and we'll return so <coughs> and again we'll return here and uh, that should set us up and we'll go inside unity and we'll set up the values for our node so first we need a point then we need the top edge the bottom edge the left edge and the right edge and also the highlight and our connected nodes need to hide an inspector so we'll add a hide an inspector and that should show us up our first level so let's hit play and maybe there are any errors but it is showing up and 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 uh, why is this color too bright so 
so our highlight is uh, not turning off we set it to false yeah we forgot to turn off the highlight so our highlight dot set active is going to false and let me go inside visual studio so we added this line we also want the highlight to turn off and let's go inside unity and i should not do that or sometimes it may crash so let's see what we can do so now our board is perfectly showing up and as you can see this is going to be our flow we can restart but uh, we are not able to see it uh, we can also go to the next scene but our game has not finished so it will not work and what now we need to do is uh, set up our update so let's go inside visual studio and we'll start by the gameplay manager and inside our update the only variable we are going to need is our starting node so the node spawn is also done so start variable setup board spawn setup node spawn setup start method setup but uh, we'll show it our button functions are also set up and our win condition is also set up so let's set up our win condition so checking the win condition is uh, not difficult so we'll create a private void check win and what we'll do is uh, we'll set our bool is winning is equals to false so we are uh, winning at the start but uh, if any of our um, nodes does not do anything so for our item in our nodes uh, we'll need to solve its highlight so item dot solve highlight and it is going to be a pretty big function which we'll need to create later so we'll generate the method and we'll push it to the end so instead of internal void we'll make it public void and let's go inside the gameplay manager and for int i is equals to zero i less than nodes dot count hmm, hmm, hmm. will set is winning to be equal to is winning and our uh, item mm, 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 yeah we could have again set it at for each item in our nodes is winning is going to be and equal to our item dot is win and we'll need to create that and if we are not winning then we'll return else uh, if we are winning then what we'll do is uh, game manager dot instance dot unlock level and if the game has finished then we'll directly go to the next scene and our win text uh, dot game object dot set active to true and our click highlighter dot game object dot set active to false and finally we'll set the has game finished to true so we should have done that at the end but uh, checking the uh, winning condition is uh, particularly easy so we'll do it at the start so we are going to have a couple of uh, public poll fields so first thing is is when so how we are going to check the when condition so if our point dot is active self so if our point is active that means that uh, 
it is only one I, uh, it should have just uh, one connected node and connected nodes dot count is equals to one if it is not one that means that it is not connected to any node and if it is not then we'll return a connected node dot count is equals to two and if there are any empty cells then automatically it will be zero so it will check our when condition and public bool is clickable and the condition to check if we can click is uh, simply uh, get and will return if our color id is not equal to negative one so we have our color id and uh, i think uh, we didn't set negative one anywhere but uh, uh, we'll do some more tiles so if ever point dot active self then we'll return true else what we'll do is uh, return connected nodes dot count is greater than zero so that means we can add it and if it is zero that means we cannot and our public pool is end node so the condition for checking and node is just a point dot active self and nothing else is going to be needed yeah so these are just the starting variables we are going to need and also we'll need a directions we can create them later so it's already 14 minutes uh, we'll go inside unity and uh, we already did a pretty lot of work and what we had to do hmm, 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 hmm. is check the win condition and yeah so we added the win condition and we'll close this and in the next part we'll need to start editing our update methods and all the methods we are going to need in our node and let's collab the is when is clickable uh, similarly to our is and our post 2d is also going to getter and setter so we'll also collapse this and it is going to do its own thing and set color is going to set the starting color uh, let me go inside visual studio and set edge similarly is going to set up the starting edges so mm, there are not any errors and uh, we have our connect nodes and our solve highlights so let's set up the functions in the next part nodes now we need to set up the inputs so uh, we already created the region for the update method and it is pretty simple most of the gameplay logic is done inside our node so let's see what we need inside our update method so how we are going to draw an edge is uh, we'll create a reference first so which is going to be a starting node and uh, whenever we hit another node and it is its neighbor will uh, uh, pass the input uh from the starting node to our current node so let's use the update and first thing we need to check if our game is finished then we'll directly return 
and if our game is not finished and input dot get mouse button down that means if we have just clicked then we'll set our start node to be equal to null and uh, we'll return and it will go inside the next frame and then we'll check if our input dot get mouse button of one that means if we have pressed input dot get mouse button of zero then it will parse our input and to parse our input we need to get our mouse position and to get it we'll use camera dot main dot screen to world point and we'll pass our input dot mouse position and then we'll convert this to 2d and it's going to be mouse pose dot x and mouse pose dot y and after we have converted it to 2d we'll uh, do a raycast and it's going to be physics 2d dot uh, raycast and will origin it is going to be our mouse pose 2d and the direction it is going to be zero then we'll check if we have a start node to be empty that means we need to set up our start node so how we are going to set up our start node uh, we'll first check if we are hitting anything and uh, our hit dot collider dot game object dot try get component and for the component we are going to out and it is going to be a node and we'll, let's just call this temporary node and we'll set our start node to be the temporary node and we'll start showing our click highlight dot game object and we need to set its color so click highlight dot game object dot transform dot position is going to be mouse pose 2d and we need to convert it to vector 3 so it automatically sets it up and we need to set up its color so its color is going to be get highlight color and the color value we are going to pass is uh, what we have hit and if we have uh, not hit anything then we'll just return and we'll wait for input and um, and that was if our start node was null and we didn't hit anything okay 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 and also we need to have one more condition that our temporary node should be clickable t node dot is clickable then only we can do that then we'll do everything else and if our start node is equals to null and we returned here then what we need to check is uh, first we'll update our click highlighters position so our click highlighter should move uh, wherever mouse moved and then we'll check if we hit something and our uh, 
hmm. dot collider dot game object dot try get component and we'll use out and we need to have a node which is going to be our temporary node and there's going to be one more condition which is it should not be equal to our uh, starting node that means we have hit a new node and if we hit a new node then what we need to do is start node dot color id is uh, not equal to temp node dot color id so both color ids are different and temp node is equals to end node okay okay Okay, so it doesn't matter if it is different, but uh, if our ending node is an end node and both are different colors, then we don't need to do anything. But if it not, then we'll update the input and we'll pass our temporary node and we'll to create the method first, then we need to check the winning condition and finally we'll set our starting node to be equal to null and we'll return and finally if we are pressing up so input dot get mouse button up of zero then we need to stop showing our highlighter and set our start node to null and what we need to do now is uh, how our input is going to be passed and we can create a default method first so how it is going to be passed and i suppose that should be it for our gameplay manager and let's create a default method for passing our input so we have our solve highlight now we need to create one more method so it needs to be public and void and we'll call it update input and the parameter we need to pass is a node and the node is going to be our connected node hmm. so what we'll do is node connected node dot connected edges dot contains key so if it does not our contain key that means uh, the direction is different it is not the neighbor then we'll return else uh, what we'll do is uh, let's just add that node so we can directly add the edge and we won't check anything we'll just uh, directly add it so let's create add edge and for the connected node we'll pass the value and we'll need to create the function so private void add edge and node connected node so how we are going to add that edge and it is going to be passed on the starting node and <clears throat> so our connected node dot connected color id first we need to update its color id then 
connected node dot connected nodes dot add our connected node not our connector node we need to add this and we need to also add in our connected nodes dot add connected node that means uh, this both are connected and let's get our connected edge and we need to game object connected edge is going to be equal to connected edges of our connected node and connected edge dot set actor to true and connected edge dot get component sprite renderer dot color is going to be from our gameplay manager dot instance dot node colors and will pass our color id hmm. so this should update our input and uh, we should be able to create some so if we are adding the edge perfectly then i think our game should uh, end perfectly fine and solve highlight uh, it is going to be a little bit uh, more difficult so let's go inside unity and let's see if we can clear our first level so we can create the uh, edges and as you can see it is working perfectly fine and in v1 so if we hit restart you can see that uh it loaded the next level but uh, by default it is our default level and if we again play a restart it will load our third level and similarly if we go to any of the levels and our game finishes uh it is going to show any errors so the issue with this point is let's suppose we created here and we also created here we created here created here created here but let's see if we add here now this was overwritten and this connected nodes count will be higher than uh, two uh, there will be some issues so the connected nodes were added again so if we are playing the perfect game and if we know all the solutions then it works perfectly fine but if you want to do any modifications it is not going to work and that's the issue but uh, somehow we had it uh, add the node and our win condition was also working perfectly fine and uh, after that we'll start by uh, checking all of the conditions how our game should work so currently we are not even checking anything we are just directly adding the edge which automatically uh, uh, modifies our connected nodes and our win condition is depending on the connected nodes so we need to make sure that uh, whenever we make a change to the connected node we are making a valid change that means uh, we are passing a valid input and that's what we'll uh, do in the uh, next part Mm, created the edges and now what we need to do is uh, delete if uh, there is already a previous edge so uh, let's see how it should work is uh, let's go inside no SP uh, no let's go to master so this is our normal edge but uh, what we need to do is uh, if we are clicking here and if we need to move back then this and the edge containing this two should be deleted and if you are moving the opposite direction then uh, the line will be divided into two parts and we need to delete uh, one of the part so that what we'll need to do
and uh, that should uh, have that should do something that means uh, the condition we need to attach is uh, let's go inside our node and let's go to the update input just uh, add edge is add edge and uh, here let's add a comment that means this is for the invalid input and the connected node already exist uh, delete the edge and the parts so we'll need to do that and it's good to have as adding some comments and what we need to first check if our connected node dot contains not connected node connected nodes dot contains our connected node that means we need to delete this edge and uh, delete the node connected to edge so we'll remove from the connected nodes and we also need to remove from our connected nodes connected nodes that means uh, uh, from that we are going to remove our script which is going to this and we need to remove the edge so remove edge mm, uh, yeah we'll need to create the function so let's create the function so we have a function for add edge and now we need to create a function for removing the edge and for removing the edge we need to pass a node and let's call this node and what we'll do is uh, let's first get the edge so game object edge is going to be connected edges of the node and connected uh, edge dot set active to false and edge is going to be node dot connected edges of this that means it should exist there and uh, we'll remove that edge so edge dot set active to false that means uh, wherever it is our edge is going to be removed and we need to remove that edge so let's use remove edge and we'll pass our connected node and after we remove that edge uh, we'll need to delete our node and we'll need to again create a function so what we need to delete is uh, current node uh, cause it may be empty and by empty I mean uh, it may be uh, uh, not connected to an uh, end and we'll again use the delete node and we'll need to create our delete node function so after we have our remove edge we'll create a delete node function and uh, where should we create yeah so let's create delete node function so private void delete node and to delete a whole node what we need to do is uh, node start node is going to be this and we'll first check if our start node is connected to end node then we'll return and we'll need to create a public bool is connected to end node so 
uh, whenever we delete we are only left with uh, one of the edges then we need to see how we need to do so first we need to check if our connected node is uh, connected to end node so for this node to be deleted we need to have it connected to end node and the value we have passed is uh, nothing and in our connected to end node it uh, requires a parameter of uh, a list of nodes and it is going to be a check node and by default it is going to null or Mm, let's return false so how we are going to check if anything is connected to end node so if check node is equals to null then we need to set up the check node and uh, suppose if our current uh, node is end node that means it is already connected to end node so we'll check if it is end node then we are going to return true else what we'll do is uh, for each of the items in our check node not check node connected node uh, we need to check if our check node dot contains item that means uh, we need to check that check node dot add item and we'll return item dot is connected to end node and the value we are going to pass is the check node so what it will do is uh, first we had only one item and our check node was null so it is going to check it is uh, its connected node and there is only one item in the connected node and it is not inside uh, our check node so it will uh, like uh, stack the function and return the value for that and uh, when it goes to the next node we already have our left item passed so it uh, should have either one or two nodes and if it has uh, uh, one node then uh, all the items are passed and it doesn't need to check but if it has two nodes uh, then what it will do is uh, uh, we already passed the connected node then it will check the another right another connection and again it will return that and finally our items are all checked that means uh, we are passing from one to another and this will be true uh, I mean this uh, loop will not turn so f at the end it will turn false and if it was at the end node then it will return true so it is like chain linking so if first is end node then go to the second one then check if second is an end node if it is not then uh, uh, return false if it uh, only has one if it has two then go to the next node so that's how our is connected to end node is calculated and if our start node is connected to end node then we don't need to delete that but if it is not then we need to delete everything and where we need to delete uh, we'll need to delete every connections uh, from the start node and uh, then we go to the next node then we go to the next node till our uh, end node returns to so let's see what we are going to do so while our start node is not equal to null uh, node our temporary node is going to be equal to null and if our start node dot connected nodes 
dot count is uh, not equal to zero then uh, will temp node dot is equals to start node dot connected nodes of zero then start node dot connected nodes dot clear uh, we are clearing everything and our temp node dot connected nodes dot remove and we are going to remove our starting node and at the end our starting node is equals to temporary node mm -hmm. so starting node is equals to temporary node that means if the count was zero that means we removed it uh, then uh, this loop should end and it should remove and that was for our reverse condition so let's go inside unity and let's see if it is uh, working perfectly fine and what should happen is uh, if we add or delete any of the previous rows so let's see we added here so if we delete there uh, nothing happened so we need to return here so if deletion was there then we need to return or else uh, it will cause errors uh, it was still adding the edge uh, even if it deleted and I think uh, so we removed but we forgot to remove the edge yeah so after doing that we need to start node dot remove edge and we need to pass our temporary node yeah so that was only removing it was getting removed but we are not able to see it so the edge is removed the nodes are removed and now it should be visible so let's go inside some greater and as you can see if we delete it here uh, this edge got deleted but uh, this was empty it was not connected to anything so let's see uh, this whole edge got deleted nothing is here and as this was empty it uh, did not connect anywhere and same will happen if uh, we create an edge we should be able to create here but uh, it got deleted so it automatically clears uh, clears everything so we don't need to do anything and uh, we are directly checking for the list so it will not uh, loop infinitely and that was for deleting and now we have deleted remove uh, what we need to do is uh, add one more condition where our starting node has two edges so let's go inside visual studio and delete node is working perfectly fine so that was for if the connected node already exists delete the edge and the parts now our next condition is going to be if our starting node has two edges and uh, to check that we'll do use connected nodes dot count is equals to two so it has two edges that means uh, we need to clear one of the edge and so let's get a temporary node and it is going to be connected node of uh, zero so we'll get a temporary node and uh, if our temporary node is connected to end node so if it is connected to an uh, it is not connected to an end node then we'll uh, delete this edge so what we need to do is connected nodes dot remove the temporary node and temporary node dot connected nodes dot remove this and we'll remove the edge to the temporary node 
and we need to delete the temporary node that means uh, it was not connected and it needs to be deleted else what we are going to do is uh, we'll set the temporary node to be connected nodes of one and again we'll repeat the steps but uh, remove the temporary node and temporary node dot connected nodes dot remove our this and we'll remove the edge to the temporary node and at the end we are going to delete the temporary node so again it's pretty similar and we can go inside unity and check correctly if it is working perfectly fine so that was the issue where advanced uh, we have this type but now we need to create an edge here our delete is only going to work if there is an edge here but if we do this what it will do is uh, it will check if uh, one of them is connected and obviously uh, one of them needs to be connected or else it will create issues and again let's restart so that was here and now we created here so it deleted one of the edge and uh, we were able to fix it and now the next condition we are going to check if our end node has two edges so uh, if our end node has two edges what we need to do is uh, delete both of them and why our end node has two edges i mean uh, we will be doing i don't know we will be zigzagging somewhere and somewhere connecting so uh, suppose yeah we'll see how we are going to do so here what we are going to do is uh, let's just copy this first and instead of connected nodes we'll use the connected node and we'll use the connected nodes dot count and the temporary node is going to be connected node and here we just uh, need to check if uh, let's just delete everything so our temporary node is uh, connected node of zero then our connected node dot connected nodes dot remove the temporary node and our temporary node dot connected uh, nodes dot remove our connected node so what it is doing is uh, we can call this temporary nodes connected node yeah and we'll remove the edge but uh, it should be called on our uh, connected node so this is our connection for the connected node then we are removing it uh, uh, whatever connection we have and also from the temporary node we are removing the current connection and similarly from the connected node we are removing the edge and we are deleting the node so that was the first connection then we can set our second connection but uh, what we'll do is uh, it was already two we can just uh, directly copy paste it again and uh, it was already zero and if our connected node dot count Mm, I don't know why its count will be zero, but uh, let's leave it there. So it should create a condition. So start node has two edges, and this one is end node has two edges. Now that condition was not checked here because that was a starting node, and uh, mm, here we are doing if and else. 
maybe if uh, both of them are different we'll need to do that yeah so if there are two we'll just uh, delete both of them now let's go inside unity and let's see what changes did happen so that was for suppose we have here now we want to add here so as you can see what it did is uh, if there were two then automatically deleted and similarly uh, we can join those two now let me comment it out so let's go inside visual studio and uh, let's comment out and let's see what would have happened if we have not done that so let's go inside visual studio and let's hit play and let's see what would have happened if we have not done that so we have this now whenever we create an edge it will uh, uh, join them so this part should be deleted now if we go inside visual studio and on comment this uh, we should have a smooth edge and it should be deleted so let's hit play and let's see how it is working so now if we add here we are able to delete the necessary edge and there's were just two conditions where we need to delete an extra node so if our starting or the ending node has two edges and if the node already exists now we are going to have a couple of uh, other different conditions which will uh, check out in the next part we check two of the conditions and we just uh, used a default one so this is our previous node and this is our connecting node and we can connect them directly here and as you can see this is getting out of hand and what we need to do is uh, have a different condition for uh, detecting that so it needs to have one degree if it is an end node and if we add something here here uh, we can delete this and we can also add here so it also works if the colors are different and again as you can see uh, this created issues so we don't need to merge this two uh, we don't need this to happen and we need to fix that so let's go inside visual studio and those errors were happening when our connected node dot count was equal to one and uh, connected node count is equals to one and the end node count both are one but uh, if the color mismatch happens and the second uh, was happening when our end node and the connected nodes dot count was one then also it was happening and let's see how we can fix them so the first condition is end node has different color and uh, one edge so let's comment so if it is end node and is different color and has one edge and the first condition for checking was uh, inside our gameplay manager in the update methods our mm, where it was so start node dot color id is not equals to so if the color ids are different and our ending node is a uh, end node that means uh, this error should only be possible if our starting node is an end node because if our ending node is an end node then this condition should uh, not even have worked so what we need to check if our connected node dot connected nodes dot count is equals to one because we have set up the condition for the two and our connected node dot color id is not equal to our current color id 
and uh, it is already not an end node so what we need to do is uh, delete uh, our connected nodes connections and it should be similar to our previous one so we'll get the temporary node which is the zero then we'll remove the connected node from the temporary node yeah so it is almost pretty similar condition so now it should not happen and uh, let's go inside unity and let's see if it is not happening so the condition was mm, let's see so this is our current and this is our uh, another color so it is deleting uh, this condition is not going to be working and our starting node needs to have only two so that also we need to check so if is a node and our connected nodes dot count is equals to one so if is a node and our connected nodes dot count is equals to one then uh, we need to delete our connected node starting node is end node and has one edge already not starting node start node is uh, different color and has one edge and connected node has one edge so starting node is end node and has one edge already and we need to create our temporary node which is going to be uh, connected nodes of zero so it should uh, fix this up and what it should do is uh, it will only allow just uh, mm, let's go inside visual studio i forgot again so if our starting node is uh, an end node and has one edge already then we'll remove that one edge and after that we'll connect that edge so here our temporary node is connected nodes of zero and in the previous one it was for the connected node uh, connected nodes connected node and here it is directly from our current node so let's go inside uh, let's save this first and let's go inside visual studio and let's hit play so uh, let's go back and uh, let's hit play so the issue was here again it didn't work uh, count is one and already is end node remove remove so it should work but why didn't it work so let's hit play and let's hit a random and what should happen if uh, the count is one here it should be one and it is an end node then it should delete this edge but it didn't delete so connected nodes dot count is equals to one and color id does not match hmm.
so why it didn't work start node as two edges and node as two edges start node as different color starting node as uh, edge node and has one edge already then we need to delete this edge connected nodes dot remove temporary node dot connected nodes dot remove and we need to remove the edge which is the temporary node uh, delete the node mm, it should work okay start node is end node one and color id are not similar so connected nodes dot remove temporary node temporary node dot connected nodes dot remove this and finally so what we need to remove okay so we are missing something here mm, let's hit play mm, mm, and uh, let's check each of our conditions first so the first one if uh, the edge already exists then it should delete that means our uh, node is working perfectly so let's see if it is so this is our current one and if we remove here it deleted at our edge and the second condition was if our starting node has two edges then it will remove one of the edge so that is uh, fine here then our second condition is if our ending node has two edges then it will remove one of the edge uh, just leave this partition as it is so as you can see uh, it deleted one of the edge and we are able to connect here and after that the condition was our uh, connected node uh, uh, our connected node has just one edge and uh, both are different colors so this is our connected node and what should happen is uh, it should delete that but now what is uh, we need to do is uh, we have already this edge here but uh, we need to delete this okay so why did that happen so we didn't make any changes to the code but it automatically uh, fixed it so i don't know why it was not working but uh, let's leave as it is and now it is working so if we are moving it around here then it will show some artifacts but uh, it is working perfectly fine and I don't know why it uh, was showing up that error and next uh, end node uh, start node or uh, end node and similarly we need to do the end node checking condition that means uh, the node already has one connection so let me show you so the next condition we are going to do is uh, advanced so here we already have one node but here we are passing then it is getting passed then it should not happen it should delete the other connection so that's why we are going to go into visual studio and again it is going to be starting node is end node uh, connected node is end node edge node and has one edge already so to check this condition we 
need to uh, we'll just do it if connected node dot connected nodes dot count is equals to one that means our ending has one edge and our connected node is end node then let's create a temporary node which is going to be connected node dot connected nodes of zero uh, we are creating an edge here then from our connected node uh, dot connected nodes dot remove will remove our temporary node and from our temporary node dot connected nodes dot remove our connected node and from our connected node we are going to remove the edge and we'll pass our temporary node and we are going to delete our temporary node so almost both are similar but here uh, we are removing from the temporary nodes and connected nodes connected nodes uh, i mean you can get it what is happening so connected nodes connected node we removed the temporary node from there temporary node connected nodes we removed the temporary node and connected node dot remove edge we pass the temporary node and we deleted whatever node was there so now it should uh, not give us two so it should not give us uh, two edges and that's how it was fixed and the next part is going to be afterwards which uh, allows us for our boxes so don't allow boxes and then color id not equal to connected node dot color id then we'll return so if our color id is not equal to our connected node dot color id then we'll just directly return but uh, it will not happen cause we'll have created a new node here and to checking for boxes there is just uh, one easy condition so it is like if uh, any of its three neighbors are same color then it will create a box uh, i don't know how it is happening but uh, mm, it is the most default condition so let me show you so let's go inside unity and uh, let me show you that illegal move so uh, first one is this if we are doing this then there's an error and if we are moving here as you can see it uh, uh, this was an illegal move uh, it should not be happening so what happened here is this edge or this node it got three same colored neighbors similarly will happen to this and again if we add it here this edge got three colored neighbors and it will happen over and over again and if our ending node is somewhere here then we can directly create it here but uh, uh, our uh, spawning conditions doesn't allow it to be spawned at the neighbor so it will either be here so you can create that again this added uh, three of them so it was an invalid move and this deletion didn't work perfectly fine so uh, the point is uh, let me show you this should uh, this edge should not have been created so this one has three edge and what happened is uh, it created a loop and we should delete uh, the whole loop and similarly is going to happen if we pass along same edge as you can see whenever there are three edges common it creates a loop and we need to delete the whole loop and that's what we are going to do and how we are going to delete is uh, we'll check all the three degree nodes 
uh, there is only going to be one so it doesn't matter much so let's create a list of node and this are going to be our checking nodes and it is going to be in your list of node and list of node our result nodes is going to be new list of node and our checking nodes is going to have uh, this at the start so first we need to get all of our edges and what we are going to how we are going to get is uh, how we deleted uh, all of our edges so it's connected to end node uh, it uh, at the end it created a list so uh, this list was passed at the bottom and we can do it similarly like that and how we are going to do is while our checking nodes dot count is greater than zero uh, we'll go through each of the item in its neighbors so checking nodes dot connected nodes checking nodes of zero dot connected nodes so we'll go through each of the uh, item in its connected nodes and if it does not contain uh, the item then we'll add to our result and we'll remove from our result nodes dot add item and we'll also add item to our checking node for each item in checking nodes of zero so so we added all its neighbors inside our result node and checking nodes dot remove and we are going to pass checking nodes of zero <laughs> so our result is uh, containing uh, again we'll need to initialize with this cause it will not contain our result so let's pass this mm -hmm. So what it will do is uh, go through all of the neighbor and add all its neighbors uh, till the edge. Checking nodes dot count. We removed the neighbor zero zero zero. Hmm. So if there are no neighbors to be added, it will be deleted and our result node will have each of the nodes and for each item in our result nodes if item dot is end node if it is not an end node and our item dot is degree p and we'll pass our result nodes then we need to delete both of its uh, edges and 
we already deleted it here and we'll return but here our temporary node is going uh, we need to set this up again so if our item is not a node and need to create the is degree 3 so is degree 3 is almost uh, a little bit more hectic and we also need to create the highlight So public bool is degree three, and we are going to pass a list of node of result, and will return false. But uh, nodes and bool is degree 3 is equals to false and int number of neighbors is equals to 0 and For each node in our result nodes, not result nodes, we need to create a private list of v2 int and it is going to be for our direction check and it is going to be new and we'll start from up which should be 0 1 then left which should be negative 1 0 mm, yeah doesn't matter then we'll go down and then right so this is our direction check and what we need to check is for int i is equals to 0 i less than direction check dot count for int j less than 0 j less than 3 v2 int checking pose is going to be equal to pause 2d plus direction check and we need to plus i plus j and will percentage it by our direction check dot count so this is our checking position and if our gameplay manager dot instance dot node grid dot try get value and we'll pass our checking position and we'll out our node which is going to be result and if our result nodes dot contains our result then we'll increase the number of neighbors uh, else we'll break cause uh, it needs to have the continuous 3 degree loop uh, so it is going to break from the first one it will check from the next one and for each of the direction so it will break here and if our number of neighbors is equals to 3 then it will break again else it will set the number of neighbors to zero and it will pass the loop again and if our number of neighbors is greater than or is equals to three 
that our is degree 3 is going to be true and we'll return our is degree 3 and that is for our is degree 3 that was pretty large and almost took a little bit higher and yeah this video is also getting larger so doesn't matter so uh, what we were solving is uh, if any of them is degree 3 then uh, we need to remove both of its edges uh, whichever are connected so it should be inside our item so let's first get our temporary node which needs to be removed and it is going to be removed from item dot connected nodes of zero we need to remove our temporary node and temporary node dot connected nodes dot remove uh, item and after that we need to remove the edge so item dot remove edge and we need to pass our temporary node and finally we need to delete our temporary node and after this has happened if our item dot connected nodes dot count is equals to zero then we'll return but if it has not happened then again we'll do the same thing and yeah it is uh, similar and we don't need to initialize it again and it should stop forming loops and uh, we can automatically return here cause uh, there should only be one loop if there are more than enough forming that means uh, uh, your game is already bugged and uh, let's go inside visual studio and i'm supposing it shouldn't allow us to form any loops so what should happen is uh, if we create a loop here uh, that means it, this one has degree 3 so it removed both of its edges and uh, it didn't allow similar with here and uh, similar it will happen when we allow the boxes so it was uh, this video was also pretty large and in the next video the only thing that's remaining is solving the highlights and it will be the last part and after that we'll start generating our levels and again the level generation is a pretty big topic we are going to use different methods so let's see in the next part so in the previous part we almost uh, added the whole grid functionality and our game is working perfectly fine and the only last function that is remaining is uh, as you can see we can create almost grids anywhere and the final grid is going to show us our winning condition and uh, the only thing that was uh, our highlight was not showing so uh, it's the only function that is remaining so we'll solve our highlight and our highlight is going to be similarly working how we deleted a node uh, we got its neighbors and uh, if we reached an end node uh, there we returned false but uh, if we didn't reach an end node we deleted but in our solve highlight we will go both of the ends and uh, we'll get the list and uh, when we get the list we'll count its uh, end nodes and if both are two that means uh, it is solved and will show the highlight 
so again is going to be pretty similar to how we have done so let's do that and if our connected nodes dot count is equals to zero then we'll just uh, return and before return we need to set the highlight dot set active to false and then we'll return but if it is not then let's use a list of node and we'll call this checking nodes and it is going to be new list of nodes and we'll pass our value and similarly list of node and this one is going to be our result nodes is new list of node and again we'll pass over this value and for each uh not for each while our checking nodes dot count is greater than zero will uh, loop to all of uh, uh, neighbors in our first node so we do for each item in our checking nodes dot uh, zero dot connected nodes and we'll check if our result nodes does not contain our item then we'll add to the result nodes and we'll also add to the checking nodes and when all of this is finished we need to remove our checking nodes of zero and it should give us the whole list and let's use checking nodes dot clear and uh, for each item in our result nodes if item dot is a node then uh, checking nodes dot add item and here uh, how we'll check if our checking nodes dot count is equals to two that means uh, it has two ends else uh, our highlight dot set active is going to be false so it is pretty simple nothing too complicated uh, what we did is uh, we get the whole list then uh, whichever is end node we copy it to the previous list and we removed that list and if it is true that means uh, it is a valid one and what we'll do is we'll first uh, turn it to true and then we need to mm, get the sprite renderer and we need to set its color to be the game manager dot instance not game manager gameplay manager dot instance dot get highlight color and we'll pass our color id so again this was pretty simple and it didn't took much time and that should be it for our final game and let's see if it highlights so we'll add so as you can see it highlighted both of them uh, it is also highlighting every one of them and as you deleted it is not highlighting if we connect it highlights and that was it for the game and in the next section we'll start covering up our level generation and how we are going to create our scriptable objects from code and it is going to be a whole new topic and uh, almost I don't know how I did it but uh, I'm going to show you and mostly I'll explain most of the parts but uh, try to keep up with it and I think supposedly this is the most difficult game that I have created uh, uh, program uh, 
by code and thank you guys for watching and see you in the next part